Hello, bonjour, shalom, and welcome to Culturally Jewish. I'm David Sklar. And I'm Ilana Zakon. Join us as we explore Jewish art, culture, and identity in Canada. On this week's episode, we chat with Trudy Romanek, the playwright of Bobby, and Lynn Weintraub, the director of this new piece of theatre currently playing in Barrie, Ontario, at Theatre by the Bay. Mama always wanted me to be a doctor, but I became an artist and that really shocked her. Now I'm interviewing people in the biz, pros, and newish, but all of them are artists and they're culturally Jewish. Alana, it's been a hot minute since we've last spoke. Um, what were you doing this past summer? Oh my God, uh, it's a whirlwind. I can't even remember the last time that we uh, did the last episode. It was a few weeks ago. I have been married since then, which was great. I don't know if you felt this after your wedding, but like, I keep wanting to go back to that night. Just having all of my closest people from all around the world in one room and dancing and eating and it was like one of the definitely like one of the happiest moments that I've ever felt I know that's like a cliche but it's that's, true that's incredibly that's incredibly sweet but I think I felt the in- complete opposite I could not wait for the night to be over and done with I mean maybe it's be maybe it's because it's I hope like, John's not listening to this no I think he would agree <laughs> completely we were both just so like finally we could just sort of say okay everyone can go home we're done with the evening now we can look forward to our trip our honeymoon plus it's also because we had COVID Uh, like a few days before and we were just exhausted so I I think we we were just so happy like thank god all this planning and preparation was done with but I wanted it to go longer like I was exhausted by the time that it ended but then I was like wait it's done I want more I just wanted to like spend more time with like some of my friends stayed around for a few more days, but then everyone left and then we we went on a little it wasn't our actual honeymoon. We're going to do like something a little bit more luxurious, but we wanted to have some quality time together after the wedding. So we went to Cape Cod for the week and uh, then our car broke down on the way back. So that's what I've been dealing with for the last couple of weeks. Um, As I get back into the swing of reality post wedding planning. But anyway, we don't need to talk about that on here. How are you? Um, I'm okay. I'm I'm back in Calgary right now. Um, I'm working. I'm helping edit someone's book right now. Oh, that's cool. That's my my major. P- yeah, it's it's a big project I'm working with. So I've teamed up with this uh, elderly writer right now, and we're working together to sort of finalize and work through his his story of of ghosts and spiritualism and it's it's uh it takes it takes some some many interesting turns his book that's cool how are you being affected by the strike i know neither of us are primarily focused in film but is it a, the strike in la affecting you much or not so absolutely much? yeah no it has so like all production is shut down across the country obviously here in calgary too so i've spoken to a lot of people that are just hoping and waiting because apparently it was supposed to be a quite a busy summer here uh, and nothing's happened uh, over the past three months. Yeah. You know, whether it's whether it's voice work, whether it's any kind of film and TV, it's just super quiet right now. Yeah, it's been pretty quiet over here too. I just started getting like a couple of auditions after many weeks of silence, but I'm really hoping things pick back up soon. Indeed, absolutely. But theater is still happening right now. In fact, we we went up, we we virtually went up to Barrie, Ontario to interview uh, the director and the playwright of this new play called Bobby. So a little bit of context, Bobby sort of follows the story of Fanny Bobby Rosenfeld, a true Canadian sports icon that many people might not know about. And the play follows her family's journey as they fled from the violence and turmoil of Russia to the safety of Barry, where she developed a passion for sports. She would then go on to become an Olympic champion representing Canada at the Olympic Games in 1928. We sat down and chatted with Trudy Romanek, the playwright of Bobby, and Lynn Weintraub, the director of this new piece of theatre. But let's first take a listen to the trailer. I'm hoping that if we, if all of you and I walk through the story together, the telling of it might lead to an answer. Running is who I am, streaking down the track, heart pounding, arms pumping. It felt so good, like, like breathing. On August 30th, Barry Ontario celebrated Bobby Rosenfeld Day. Trudy, can you tell us who Bobby was? Sure, Bobby Rosenfeld, her originally, uh, she was known as Fanny Rosenfeld, was a young woman who grew up in Barrie and over the course of her youth 
revealed herself to be a fantastic athlete and worked constantly at becoming an even better athlete. And she went on to be quite a sensation in Toronto playing in numerous different sports, softball, basketball, tennis, hockey especially. And then in 1928, she was named as part of the six women on the Canadian Women's Olympic track and field team who went to the Amsterdam Olympics in 1928. She was um, among the first women to compete in track and field in the Olympics because uh, the Olympic Games had only, the modern Olympic Games had only allowed women to take part in a very select few sports that they deemed to be ladylike. And it was great concern about women taking part in track and field. So 1928 was the first opportunity for them to do that. And was there something specific about Bobby's story that drew you to writing this play? I originally approached the story uh, from the perspective of a, a Barry citizen, because my family has been in Barry for a long time and was in Barry when the Rosenfeld family was here. But I grew up knowing knowing nothing about the Jewish culture within Barry and never having heard the name Bobby Rosenfeld. So when I began, when I understood how impactful she had been, not only in sports, but also in journalism and in women's rights, really, uh, I was amazed that I had never heard of her before. And so that really inspired me to jump into the research. And it was when I got into the research that I saw the anti-Semitism that was underlying the story and investigated that further. So how did you come across Bobby Rosenfeld as a theme of your new show? Was that, did someone tell you you should check out this person or you were researching interesting tidbits about Barry history, just to clarify for the listeners? I had attended um, an induction ceremony at the Barry Sports Hall of Fame for a family member about 20 years ago, and I saw um, a lovely portrait of Bobby Rosenfeld up on the wall. And I was, it was obvious that she held a place of honor in the Barry Sports Hall of Fame. But I was perplexed as to who she was and why I'd never heard her name before. So I looked into her briefly then to find out who she was and what she had done and was flabbergasted to see how much she had done. And then I knew that Theatre by the Bay, the um, one of the professional theatre companies in town here, had a mandate of exploring Barry's history in plays that they present. And so then I, I started digging into the recent, that, that was sort of the eye opening. Oh, this is a woman that we should feature because so many people in Barry didn't know about her. So Lynn, when did you join the process as the director? Did you have any hand in the development of the actual storyline or you brought in after it was completed? Was there changes that you made? I know sometimes with new work, sometimes you edit the script as you're going because you realize when it's on its feet that some things are not landing. So tell us a bit about that that journey joining the process, Lynn. I had uh, worked with Theatre by the Bay as an actor last summer in 2022. And um, at that time, at the, at the end of my time up there doing a show, I had sat down with uh, Ian uh, Mogach, who is the artistic director, and sort of said, you know, love this company, love to work with them again. Let me know if there's ever anything that you think I might contribute to. And he mentioned at the time, well, we're working on this script. We have this new script that's being developed by a local playwright that I think is really interesting. And I don't know, maybe we'll we'll get back to you and, and get your feedback on that in some way. And, and then, you know, time went by. Not, I heard nothing. And then in, in February of this past year, um, I got a call from Ian and he said, this play is going to be part of our season and uh, we'd love you, you to consider coming aboard as director. So that was my first time to get to see the script and get to uh, read that draft. I believe it was, I think, the fourth draft at the time. So so that script had already been written. It had been it had been amended. And then there had been a, a, a workshop done with uh, actors back in December, I think, of 2022 um, on it uh, to sort of further develop it and hear voices on it. And then when I came aboard, um, it was it was pretty much there, but there were some things that I felt from both a standpoint of a director who, you know, was going to be tasked with making it come to life on a stage for an audience and for actors to be able to really portray these characters. 
Uh, but I think also as a as a Jewish woman, as a, an artist who comes from um, not the very Jewish community, but the Toronto Jewish community and has lived a life in this body and has, you know, sort of experienced my own version of, um, you know, identity in the bigger world in Canada. Um, I really understood a lot of what what Trudy was was pulling from the uh, the subtext of 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 what potentially what Fanny and her family were facing. And I really wanted to make sure that we uh, gave a lot of attention and, and took care with, especially in today's climate, um, with all the renewed anti-Semitism in the world. I, I felt like this was a really perfect time and um, yeah, a beshared moment to share this idea um, and do it in a setting like Barry originally, because though we may talk about these issues and there's a lot of theater that happens um, within the Toronto and Winnipeg, Montreal Jewish communities. We all kind of agreed that um, other communities needed to hear the story and needed to think about it from their perspective of how their ancestry factored into this story and how this the community of Barry um, was a key player in in all, all the positive and negative um, aspects of what the uh, Rosenfeld family experienced when they moved there. So. So Lynn, you mentioned that you are Jewish and how important this script meant to you as a, as a Jewish performer and an artist. Trudy, I believe you are not Jewish, so I'm curious how you felt approaching this 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 uh, this character and this background, this this very Jewish story. Did you feel any trepidation approaching it as someone who's not Jewish, or did you feel you had the support needed and the information required to really write this story? I initially felt a great deal of trepidation. Um because I didn't want to do anything that might be disrespectful that I was just unaware of. I, I knew that although I could research Jewish culture and that sort of thing, that was not nearly enough, that I had to talk to, to people who were Jewish and who had been through this experience to make sure that I got the nuances. So um, that was actually one of the things that when we moved forward with uh, the script with the theater company, I insisted that as I was developing the script, we have cultural consultants who are Jewish and that we have uh, Jewish members on the team so that I could learn from them and and they could offer the wisdom um, that I needed to in order to enhance the story and make it authentic. And so that first workshop that Lynn mentioned that was back in December, we had with four Jewish actors who were just lovely and very generous in suggesting, for example, um, including more Yiddish words. So there are more Yiddish words in the script now than there had originally been. And then the um, cultural consultants that I worked with, they both reviewed the script and gave me feedback, also consulted others in their own communities to provide feedback on those things. That like makes my heart warm to hear how much work was put into that. I wanna go back to talking a little bit about the historical aspect of the story. Uh, you mentioned adding in these Jewish moments. I'm curious how close the play was to the historical events that actually happened with Bobby and how much liberty you took with adding some of your own fictitious aspects to her life story. I tried to find as much information about Bobby's early days as I could. Obviously, it's difficult because she wasn't famous then when she was, you know, 15 years old. So I did a lot of pouring over the newspaper archives just to find out what kind of student she had been at school, what kinds of things had been in the paper about the Rosenfeld family or other Jewish families during those youthful years. And I tried to use as much of that content as I could because it was so sparse. I would say probably 95% of what's in the story is actually what happened. The biggest deviation that I think I took was that I included an episode of violence, anti-Semitic violence against one of the family members that, as far as we know, did not happen, but could well have happened. That's the only major thing that I changed. Uh, you know, there were some minor things, you know, Olympic medals weren't on ribbons back then, but I put them on ribbons because I needed them to be <laughs> on stage around her neck, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. But yeah. I, I'm a real stickler for when I write historical drama dramas. I really want it to be something that could have happened. So I tried to, to stick. I use, even used some of Bobby's own words in the script oh, because wow. I wanted to include that sense of who she was. 
Beth David Hebrew School is now accepting new students. One of Toronto's most dynamic, egalitarian, conservative congregations is offering personalized Hebrew lessons, hands-on learning, exciting field trips, and small group activities, all with a hot dinner included. This is Jewish exploration that will last your children a lifetime. Classes run weekly on Monday nights from 5 to 7.15 p.m. starting September 18th. To learn more and enroll, visit BethDavid.com or email Adina, that's A-D-I-N-A, at BethDavid.com. Lynn, I'd like to move a bit and touch upon some of the rehearsal process right now. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if there was anything that stood out or was surprising that you discovered about Bobby's life or even Jewish life in Barrie, Ontario. So the rehearsal process was a, was a really lovely collaborative event. Um, I, I always ascribe to the dictum of if you cast well, you're half more than halfway there. And we have an incredible cast of actors. Almost all of them are Jewish, uh, partially by design and partially by them just being the right people. We did spend a lot of time reading the script, talking about plot points. Um, and then once we got up on our feet, it really became uh, 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 about trying to encapsulate these ideas and these characters and their individual perspectives on the times they were living in. From Bobby's perspective, she's definitely the driver of the story. It's her story that she's telling. And the others are 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 sort of providing uh, representations of, of the different viewpoints in her life. Uh, her mother, who is more traditional and wants her to do to be traditional and not uh, step outside of the lines of what a woman uh, is was expected to do in that time. Uh, a Jewish woman was expected to get married, raise a family, um, not go to the Olympics. Um, that was never in in her mother's uh, dreams for her. And even the way we portrayed the mother, not even once she went, was that something that made her feel happy and fully, uh, fully accepting. She, she really was worried. Um, so we really worked very hard on trying to sort of understand from our own histories. I mean, from my Jewish grandparents and, and Olivia Daniels, who's the place Bobby, her Jewish family and Nadine's and, and Ori's, everyone sort of pooled together their experiences of understanding of what, um, what they've learned of their own history to bring to make this family, this fictitious family, seem specific and real. And what do you hope people are walking away with after seeing this show? A lot of things. I mean, we hope they're entertained. We hope they're moved. Um, I, I, when I see the show, I sometimes turn my head and watch the audience and see if they're feeling. I see on their faces that they're feeling a connection. Um, we want them to appreciate how um, how important this woman was and how difficult her struggle was and and maybe reflect on why it is that I think why why did this woman um, get forgotten in many in many ways I mean we we know about lots of people from Canadian history who did remarkable things uh, but she did equally remarkable things and and yet even within the town of Barrie people didn't hear about her um, and why is that? And and as Jews, why why is it that we, um, I think in many ways, s- struggle to celebrate our own uh, cultural and, and sports and artistic leaders fully? Um, I know that when I was growing up in Toronto, uh, becoming an actor, getting involved in theater, though I did, I did train and I, I, I grew up at Leopoldsland's Theater back in the day, I, I really felt like my Jewish identity was sort of not something that I wanted to put out there first and foremost, and that I, um, there's a line in the play where, where Bobby says, <clears throat> where Fanny says, oh, she's Bobby at that point, she says, I, I want to be seen as a, a great athlete who happens to be Jewish, um, and and I see that, that, um, that battle back and forth between, you know, your identity, your cultural identity, but also just being good at what you do and being known for that and recognized for that. I'm curious to hear more about the audience reactions because the show opened on the 30th of August. Trudy, can you uh, tell us a little bit about some surprising reactions or were there people coming up to you from Barry saying, wow, I didn't know about this. I can't believe I didn't know about this. Just about every person from Barry who saw the show said exactly that. It's very, it's a very small pool of people in Barrie who do or did prior to this show know about that. I think 
to a person, every Jewish member of the audience who has come up to speak to me has thanked us for presenting this story. And the word that they have used is nuanced, that they appreciated the nuances in the story that we had included, that they related to the family, or that some of them literally struggled to tell me that this play meant a lot to them because it, in their eyes, showed the struggles of their parents or their grandparents so clearly and accurately, which, I mean, that means the world to me. But the other interesting side of it, I relate very strongly to a character in the play, a non-Jewish character in the play whose name is Evelyn, and I have created her. She's a, a fictional character who's an amalgam of various people in Barry. And so I have created Evelyn as a friend who f- believes she is an ally, but does she know what that actually means? And so at the end of the play, there is a discussion between she and Bobby about whether Evelyn is strong enough in her beliefs to actually stand up for them when the going gets rough, if you will. And uh, I felt that that really needed to be in there because I was that person who thought I knew at least something about Jewish culture and had missed this entire cultural group in my own town that I grew up in. Um, I wanted the audience members like me in Barrie who didn't know the story, who weren't Jewish, to see themselves in that character. And interestingly, a number of my friends have commented on that and thanked me for that. And then there are other friends who, who came up to me and told me how much they were enjoying the show at intermission and haven't said a word to me since. Can I say something uh, just to follow up on what Trudy said? One of the other uh, things we discussed in the rehearsal room and we, we made sure that um, Trudy understood our commitment to doing was to make sure that we did not create um, villains, capital V villains, out of the non-Jewish characters. Um, for me personally, I it was important that the audience not hate or or uh, totally mistrust any of the characters, even the ones whose viewpoints and some of their language is is clearly biased and clearly um, derogatory the way they speak towards the the Jewish characters. But I wanted to to try to find a way to humanize them and and in devising the set with this with um, Logan Cracknell, who was the the set designer, I really wanted to make sure that that we we did this show in a thrust, almost almost in the round, and I wanted the audience to sit around the actors and and try to get a a different viewpoint of each character based on little little slip snippets. and And there were times when I wanted the villain, so to speak, to to be vulnerable and be facing the audience, so the audience could sort of try to understand and you can understand the way Trudy's written one of the characters in particular he has a moment where he just sort of unburdens himself about why he feels so much disdain for the Jewish families that have come to Barry and you know it's easy to just dismiss him and say he's just a bigot um, but he he it comes to him from a very deep place of feeling like uh, as a Scottish immigrant himself, years past, that his family had struggles, and that those struggles were um, were very real, and that and yet you know they they managed to to persevere in Canada, and and that he just did, he really believed that um, that this was something that that should be expected of everyone coming to Canada, and and fully missed you know as 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 the Bobby character says, you know, thousands and thousands of years of persecution, right? It's not the same. And yet in his mind, it's similar. So I really wanted to make sure that we we didn't um, lose that sense of, of where the Evelyn character and where, where the Mr. Stewart, the Stewart family were coming from in their beliefs, misguided though they might have been, they certainly had clear a, a clear pathway to, to making these judgments and, and having this frustration and disdain for for the the Jewish immigrants that had come to their town. That seems like a really important story to be telling, especially right now with the rise in anti-Semitism and all the conversations that are having. Um, I'm curious if you have any plans for a tour or a remount in 
other parts of the country or elsewhere. It's amazing how many people have come forward out of the audiences after the play and said exactly that. This needs to tour, or when will this be in Montreal, or you should really take this to whatever. Yes, I, I absolutely agree. And and sorry to interrupt, but I um, years ago I did a, a, a tour f- that was sponsored from the Simon Wiesenthal Center of uh, of, of a very a bridge version of the Diary of Anne Frank. And we took it into schools all across Ontario. And it, it was during Holocaust Education Month. Um, and I was blown away as an actor in that about just, just seeing the reactions of these school children to learning about um, what had gone on, you know, during the Holocaust in, in that place uh, uh, story. But I, I we were, we were, talking the other day about it's a shame that the show didn't run in Barrie into the school year because it would be a fantastic show to bring school groups to, high school groups. Um, and and yes, I do think that, I do hope that the show has a life beyond um, just this run because it, it really is timely. It really is um, moving and and important. And yet it's not didactic. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's funny. Um, it's warm. I feel, I mean, tooting my own horn, but I feel like we found a balance up there between um, education, so to speak, and ed- and entertainment um, that I think would be really well received, um, not just in, you know, Montreal, Winnipeg, Toronto, where we typically see Jewish theater, Vancouver perhaps, but in places like, you know, Kingston, Ontario, Calgary, Edmonton, Kamloops, and these, like, this is what's happening in theater now is that we really are triumphing and, 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 and creating place for particular perspectives on the Canadian experience um, from people who are typically not listened to and stories that were typically not told because they were deemed to be specific and ethnic and niche. And I think what we're learning across the board is that the particular does resonate. Well, yes, I'd love to see it if it ever does come out here to Western Canada. That would be very exciting. Um, but if you are in the Barrie area, Bobby does run until September 10th, and you can always find out more information at theaterbythebay.com. Trudy and Lynn, thank you so much for joining us today. We both really appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much. So coming up soon in Canada, Jewish arts land, uh, first we have TIFF and there's a bunch of good Jewish content. I'll just highlight one particular film called The Boy in the Woods, which is Canadian by Rebecca Snow. And it's about the Holocaust survivor Maxwell Smart, who uh, has nothing to do with Get Smart, I found out. (laughs) But Maxwell Smart survived the Nazi occupation and he was hiding in the forests of Poland. So this is... Uh, based on a true life story of the survivor. David, what's going on in Calgary? Uh, Well, two things are happening in Alberta coming up on September 10th in Edmonton. The Chlor Modern Quartet will be performing at the Citadel Theatre, and the quartet is from Kfar Bloom in northern Israel. It's their first time coming to Alberta, and apparently they are very excited to come here and perform. And also at the beginning of October, October 1st and 2nd, the Israeli Chamber Project is returning to Calgary um, at the Pro Musica's 47th season. So for people who don't know, the Israeli Chamber Project, also called the ICP, is a chamber music society made up of a pool of musicians and guest artists who perform like a wide range of classical and contemporary repertoire. Um, And this time they're going to be exploring the nexus between Robert Clara Schulman and Johannes Brahms. Mm. So if you're in town, anywhere in Alberta, north or south, those two things are happening. Check them out. There's also an event happening on September 13th if you're in Montreal. It's a book launch for In the Land of the Postscript, the complete short stories of Chava Rosenfarb. That is going to be a launch as well as a discussion with Goldie Morgenteller and Sebastian Schulman, who we have chatted to before, though I believe it was on our old podcast, Bonjour Chai. Uh, So that is also about the Holocaust, and it's about the lives of various Holocaust survivors in North America that actually reflect Chava Rosenfarg's 
personal experience as a survivor who settled in Montreal and also has other characters that are very different from her experience. So if you're in Montreal on the 13th, be sure to check that out. Culturally Jewish is hosted by me, Ilana Zakon, and me, David Sklar. We're produced and edited by Michael Freeman, and our theme music is by Sarah Siegel Lazar. We're a member of the CJN Podcast Network. To support our work and everything that the CJN does, visit the cjn.ca slash donate to make a monthly donation and receive a charitable tax receipt. Thank you so much for listening. Jewish comedy legend Modi and Hasidic rapper Nisim Black are coming to Toronto to perform live at UJA's campaign launch on September 7th. Visit jewishtoronto.com to get your tickets today. Don't miss Modi and Nisim Black on September 7th. Go to jewishtoronto.com for your ticket today.